How do you write a winning abstract that can get your paper or poster submission accepted so that you can present at your favorite academic conference? Stick around and learn out the five keys to getting it done today on Navigating Academia. What's up everybody, my name is Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh and I want to warmly welcome you to this episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to advance your career in academia. As always, I appreciate the love, so please do take a second to like and share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell so that you get notifications every time we post new content, and comment below. You can also follow us at these social media accounts. Today we're going to be talking about how you can write an amazing conference abstract to get your poster or your paper accepted to whatever conference you want. All of these conferences usually have a very similar submission process. Usually everything these days is electronic. The only thing that really differs is that some conferences require you to uh, submit what's called a structured abstract where it gives you specific fields where you need to fit information in or something that's more loose and you know, literally abstract. Pardon the pun. But this happens quite frequently, is that there will simply be a big box saying, you know, type your abstract here, and then you simply copy and paste from, let's say, a Word document, or you even type directly in there. However, no matter what you're doing in terms of what your submission looks like, you need to tell your reader five things in that abstract, and that's what we're going to be chatting about today. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what I recommend is taking a five sentence approach. Each sentence is going to fulfill one of these different criteria. You can always have multiple sentences to be able to establish the criteria, but oftentimes you have a word limit, which is pretty tight. So you wanna make sure that to the extent possible, you're staying concise. The first sentence, the first thing you want to establish is essentially, why should I care? Now, I is the person who's going to be reading your conference abstract to decide whether to accept your paper or poster. So why should that person care? They're going to be looking at hundreds of these things. What is the big picture in terms of the problem represented within your niche. For example, my last field was forensic psychology, specifically the area of risk assessment, so predicting the likelihood of future violence. So for example, we could say something like, violence is a major public health and safety issue, comma, as the World Health Organization ranks interpersonal violence not associated with warfare to be one of the top 20 leading causes of mortality, which is true. And then I cite WHO, 2012. So there you go, right? Big, big, big picture. That's where we're starting. We're starting all the way out here. Make it really clear what the, the overall phenomenon is that your study is investigating and addressing. Don't jump too deep, you know, right in and just start with, you know, my study took a look at the accuracy of such and such in this population in this country. No, we got to start real broad. Think about it like a funnel. Right? We're, we're going in a funnel fashion. We're starting real broad. That's sentence number one. Sentence number two is what is your specific research question that you're taking a look at? So, for example, to be able to use uh, what I was just talking about, okay, violence, major public health and safety issue, right? Sentence number two could be something like the most commonly used risk assessment tool to predict the likelihood of future violence uh, in youth is the savory or the structured assessment of violence risk in youth, right? There you go. Number two, but remember, you gotta say what's your specific research question. So maybe instead of just one sentence, you have another one that says, Although uh, numerous studies have been published on the accuracy and reliability of the savory in the United States, comma, no such research has been conducted in Guam. Let's just say. Fantastic. No such research in Guam, even though violence is a big problem, and even though you already know what the big tool is, there's a big gap there. That's what you've established. Sentence number three, the next thing you want to establish is, okay, now I know what the problem is. What did you do? What did you do to be able to address that problem? 
And so you literally just tell them. You say, uh, in the present study, we evaluated the accuracy and reliability of the savory amongst 153 juvenile detainees uh, in Guam. Fantastic. So that's literally what you did. What is the actual design of the study? Give me the methodology. And this leads into sentence number four, which is what are the key findings of your study? Right? Uh, so it may be something like uh, results showed evidence that the savory produces similar levels of accuracy in Guam as in the United States, semicolon. However, comma, the instrument performed significantly better for male juvenile detainees relative to female juvenile detainees, period. Okay, interesting. So I got something that's similar and I got something that's different. That's very valuable. What I found is that if your study only confirms everything that's already out there, there's nothing unique about it, the likelihood is maybe it'll be accepted as a poster, but not a paper. And if it's a teeny tiny baby study, like you know you got 15 uh, individuals in it, it's it's a lot better to be able to submit it as a poster because the likelihood that it'll be accepted as a paper is not very high. But that's sentence number four. And finally, sentence number five is, what are the implications of your study? So for instance, in the example that we've been using, I may want to say something at the end of my conference abstract, which is something along the lines of, uh, these findings suggest that the savory uh, may prove useful if uh, implemented in juvenile detention settings in Guam, comma, particularly uh, in uh, detention centers for males. There you go. What are the practical implications? You may even have another sense about further research is warranted on blah 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 to establish blah blah blah. That's another one that you can have. But again, nice, tight, concise. So literally we've just come up with a conference proposal together here right now in this video. Nice, tight, that's the flow. Very general to very specific. And literally, if you think about how an abstract usually goes, where we've got an intro, a method, a result, discussion, that's pretty much what we've done, except we've just added kind of one additional piece in there. So that's, that's the nice thing, is that it really mirrors an entire study abstract, as if you were submitting to a peer-reviewed journal. And so I do recommend that when you do submit to conferences and you have to draft this sort of a thing, you really say that that text that you've written because it may prove useful down the road when you're submitting to an actual academic journal. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. I wanna hear from you in the comments below. Are you preparing to submit a poster or a paper presentation to an academic conference? If so, did these tips help you today? And if you're a tried and true, a very experienced conference presenter, I wanna hear from you in the comments below. Do you have any tips of your own that you can share with our viewers? I wanna hear from you. And as always, if there's any topics that you'd like us to address in a future episode of Navigating Academia, you can do so by simply posting them here, and then we will take a look, and the more upvotes, the more likes that we get on a particular topic, the more likely we are to make a video for you. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends, colleagues, and students. Subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one career mentoring or coaching from me, you're more than welcome to get in touch with a one-hour consultation call via the website below. And let's chat a little bit about the kinds of conferences that you want to submit to. And as you're in the process of writing those up, let's take a look at them together and see how we can shine them up and maximize the likelihood that they'll get accepted. Signing off, everybody. Have a great day. And remember to get out there, take chances, and be your best self. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.